Listen, Linda. Okay. <laughs> Linda says Microsoft is Microsoft is talking so much about AI right now with the Copilot announcements, and yet very little of that is actually available to the public. Why are they talking so much about technology getting people excited, which might take months or years to make generally available? Microsoft Why would you tease us, Microsoft? Get people excited. Never does that. <laughs> never does you know, that. But there was kind of a there was an there was an era like um where where Microsoft was trying to do less of the you know way out in the future roadmap stuff yeah. and just say like here's the stuff which Focus is getting ready. Now. Right. And and they kind of, they pulled back from that. And it does seem like we're back to where, and, and the folks that follow the roadmap know what I'm talking about, where we hear about stuff, like it's, it's pending. And then a year and a half later, it's still showing as pending or it could be clawed back. Yeah. Uh-huh. Or, or put, you, you've got a lot, like when you look in the message center and it's pushed out and there's a lot that's been pushed out and has been over the last year, so much more than, you know, I have ever seen before. Um, yeah. And it is, it is a problem because I've had a few people saying to me around Copilot going, oh, I saw this, it's available. No, no. it's really only in testing with 10 clients at the moment. So that's really still somewhat early-ish in the piece. Oh. And we've even got a lot of MVPs going, you're talking about all this stuff. Our clients are speaking to us as consultants and we've got nothing to show for it. We can't actually help anyone. We can't plan anything. We can't even look at it. We can't test it ourselves. We, you know, I know it'll get to that point, but the fact that it's sure. been so publicly put out there has been difficult without a doubt. Well, but if you look at the timing of of the events that Microsoft has, so some of the so so you look at uh, like Microsoft when they're on the on-prem model, and they model they look at the three to four year cycle, and you'd see those those major minor releases. Um, there, I mean, one of the complaints of moving to Evergreen is that there's so much that's going on. I mean, famously last yeah. year, over 450 different announcements around uh, or releases or functionality around Teams alone. Um, yeah. Just crazy number there, but Microsoft is is there is a, some method to the madness of announce stuff, showing what's happening, you know what what might be internal only and in art pure R and D. Then you get a little bit more from a developer standpoint out of build. Um, they do like the um, private previews. Um, the very limited mm -hmm. previews, but by the time Ignite rolls around in the fall, then they have. Some of those participating in those previews, doing case studies and other examples of that. So it's like, here's what we actually saw from using the technology and playing with it. And then GA happening by end of the year. With some of the co-pilot stuff, it's kind of following that model. Mm, yeah. um, and, and and so, you know, Microsoft doesn't want to, you know, in general, doesn't want to release something that they uh, haven't had some real world experience with partners and customers around. I mean, some of this stuff, like it's not even partners. MVPs are not getting access either. Like you yep, have to be right. a customer with real pilot scenarios around that. And again, because they want those examples because they're fine tuning the functionality and what actually and gets it's going generally to cost. released. Christian. And what so cost. therefore they're building awareness to make people excited to want to spend the money. <laughs> Because and I don't have any problem with that. See, My issue, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say with Linda's question too, okay, so why don't they do all that stuff first and then do the hype machine? Yeah. Well, because you've got to do the hype machine to get those big companies going, oh, this sounds okay. like a good idea. Yeah, yeah let's, yep. let's test this and let's get the publicity that comes with being one of those exclusive first few, yeah. which gets everybody else excited raises awareness they see the energy around it so that kind of helps them gauge how many of their internal resources need to get allocated for ramping up more and support and it just that that snowball just starts growing and i understand all of those scenarios my issues is when they make a big hype and an announcement at an event and then they don't ever follow through with it aka personal what? plans it never happens like what are you talking the, about the <laughs> They announced, and I can't remember what they, they some ridiculous name they called the personal roster. planner. Yeah, roster. what was it called? Roster Is plan. it the roster which, plan? Yeah. Yeah, which is the, like not intuitive. What the heck does that mean, a roster plan? Like I'm not, but it's my, a roster is a group of people and it's just for me. So how is that even 
like make that's your to do. Yeah, but they no Army but of planner. One, we Sherry, want the interface on. of planner. Yeah, that's right. my yeah. five. What was it? Five or six years ago? I think I just got the this you know flashback from Facebook. You were in dancing in to the B fifty twos with Jeff Keeper uh, six years ago, and that's when they announced that, and it still hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. That's ah. where I have a problem with that. Yeah. That it don't announce it and make a big deal if you're not don't yeah. have a lot of confidence that it's going to come through. I will say planner in general, the back end behind that is a bit chaotic. Yeah, I'll stick with that word. Yeah. Um, so I wonder if that's one of the things that they got out there and then they went back to do it and went, oh crap. Uh. <laughs> I, yeah. I think it may have, so sorry, folks, we are uh, veering into pure speculation <laughs> realm here, um, but because Disclaimer they just, statement. and this, this is, has nothing to do with Linda's question, but uh, well, it's sort of, I mean, it's an example of this, hey, um, it, where, uh, so they just announced that, and I think this was at the N365 conference in Las Vegas. So a few weeks back um, that they have hired somebody or moved somebody in a new role to take on task management. Everybody remember that hearing about that and they named some person that I didn't know who it was over that, Mm -hmm. that more focus around that. And that includes to do and a task in one note and outlook uh, and planner integration uh, with project for uh, online, like kind of all of those things. Yeah. Like it's not a small thing. This is one of those things again. With what is the number one project management tool in the world still to this day? Excel. Ex- Excel. Excel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excel. There's so much of that. What to use when going on around tasks now and how they integrate into Outlook. And I'm doing all these one-on-one sessions with. Yeah. But, anyway, this is a whole. But, you know, another but there topic. are so many. But it is. It's, it part is of it, though, complexity. Th- there, there are so many. Yes, no, it's very complex. Yeah. There are so many tools that are out there, um, but they. This is one where I was really hoping for the one Microsoft messaging a few years back to take on the task management and, and drive this. I even told I, I, I via social to Jeff Teeper said, "Hey, I would come back to Microsoft to work, help work on this problem." And this is where I started my career in the pro, the PMO world, and to come mm-hmm. back in on that that side of thing. I'm so passionate about the topic, but this is something where they need to stop uh, uh, with the uh, little announcements about the little side products, none of which answer the bigger problems, the bigger needs, and they need to have a consolidated vision for task management that they have and they stick to. Yeah. I'm off my soapbox. And stick to is the key word there too. Stop moving the cheese. Yeah. Right. It just confuses people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there were so many big announcements all hitting in one short period of time as well. uh, When you look at what sort of was being pushed out and a lot of it wasn't going to be coming till at least sort of then the end of the year, as you said, Christian, is that, you know, what comes out when, how does it build towards it? But I can imagine that for the public, it seems like it's a really long way away when you go big hype and here's the you know most organizations it would literally be here it is this is new go buy now you know whereas yeah. microsoft doesn't do that so that's where i think where the confusion often comes in for the consumer because it's not a here it is product that gets now marketed for retail it's very yeah. different type of way of doing things when it comes to tech of the of you know this is an idea and what we're getting to and and doing the hype around it so it's but, a bit flipped on its head from a consumer perspective we we have to remember that those of us that are MVPs and RDs that we we get a good view into the cheese making process yeah that's and so right. we're seeing a lot of the activity um that the rest of the world doesn't see. And um, yeah, Keep so it's, mind. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, For better I don't mind if they make cheese, just stop moving the cheese. Yes, I, I think it's probably more sausage than it is cheese. And it's way too many holes right. in it's that me. cheese for my liking. So, <laughs> cheese and sausage it's go sw- together. So. It's Swiss it's cheese. It's <laughs> like, so I, I have empathy for, for Linda's position because I'm in the yeah. same place. I, I haven't seen it outside of maybe the same videos that Linda has seen. And I find it very yeah. disruptive. And I I believe that it affects customers the same way. And they're trying to, Linda's trying to get ahead of the curve to understand what this disruption will be. I'm in the same boat. I want to know if it's cool is. or not. And so the mm-hmm. hype machine makes total sense. Uh, 
it trickles down a year later, someone might get Copilot in their hands. Well, I remember when Loop first dropped and they said like, yeah, you'll get your Loop component in Teams, great, but I couldn't do much with that. I really needed that Loop app to know if it was going to be this disruptive technology that everyone said it was going to be. It was gonna change the way that we work. Well, I still have not gotten my hands on the Loop app. It's not allowed in my home organization and I wouldn't put it in my own personal tenant because what am I gonna do? Like collaborate with myself. It's not the same experience <laughs> inside of my own dev tenant. So like yep. I want the Microsoft to revisit the hype machine and start doing the empowerment when it starts to come GA. It's cool that they bring it out, you know, stockholder value goes up, it generates hype, but let's hold off on the really disruptive stuff until we empower near the end. Coming soon would be nice. Well That's said. two words. That was Coming very well said. Coming soon. Thank you.